We are live in Lab Code Agents. Let's get going. For those of you joining us on the webinar portion, thank you for your patience. For those of you on Facebook, thanks for joining us. We've got Marcus and Logan from Street Text, and today we're going to be talking about digital door knocking. Guys, when I started in the business in 2003, 4, I was door knocking, and there was no digital door knocking at the time. So as the world changed and got what I think better uh, in the sense of more tech, we're able to do this. So I'm excited to go in and, and show the people what the possibilities are for digital door knocking. Obviously we'll be showcasing street text, so there's no surprise there, but let's get started guys. Tell us, tell us what this is all about. Logan. Yeah, I mean, um, I'll, I'll quickly start by, by, you know, essentially reaffirming what you just said. You know, I started real estate myself in 07. Um, Facebook, you know, really wasn't much of a thing at all other than an idea at that point. And um, I did much of the same thing. I, I, you know, I say this all the time. I, I couldn't grow facial hair. I was a, I was a child. And, you know, the only way to, to find clientele was to get myself in front of them. So obviously, you know, striking up a conversation in the shopping, uh, shopping mall and in, in lines at places, you know, it always seemed uncomfortable. Um, door knocking worked phenomenally well for me. I, I, that's basically how I acquired all my business at the, the, the early stages. Um, and obviously, given what's happening around us now, door knocking is going to be a little bit more difficult. Right. Oh, so, was feedback. We're good. Oh, so okay. But yeah, that's, that's the thought is that, you know, door knocking right now is going to be considerably more difficult. However, digitally door knocking has never been easier, right? The ability to put yourself in front of people, acquire phone numbers, emails, text messages, even if you just get a physical address, you could then either do physical door knocking, send mailers. There's so many strategies that we're going to, you know, go over a few of them here today, of course, but understand how much easier it is now instead of saying i'm going to go knock on 500 doors how long does that take you right we can now do an ad yeah <laughs> that's right well, that's, that's going to take me about three times it take you all day it's going to take me about 20 20 hours if they're spaced out pretty well right and that's the thought is and, and how much rejection is is mixed in with that i mean if you get one percent telling you, hey, I'm ready to talk to you. That's, that's a pretty decent turnover. It's a pretty good day. So door knocking. Well, dude, let's, let's, take it, let's take it a little deeper because I was a heavy door knocker. So I want some numbers. So I'll tell you, if, as I was door knocking, and obviously I'm not going to tell people to go door knock right now, especially with COVID-19 turning around, right? And going up instead of down. But let's get some real numbers so we can show. I was door knocking. Dude, I want some coffee, Marcus. Damn it. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, back to this. <laughs> Every hour that I was door knocking a house, and we're talking about 14 to 1800 square feet, regular house, right out in Southern California. I was finding about 13 people home an hour. And that's how many I was finding home and talking to in about an hour, which is not bad, right? But out of those, you know, because I'm farming, I'm probably gonna to have to go through about 200 of them to find somebody that's kind of interested, right? And that's a lot of time I put into that because I remember doing that and walking lots of hours. So now we go into digital door knocking where we can go thousands at an instant and then wait to lock them in. I think that's the magic, And Well, and you can still be there personally again. If you set up your automations and, and your sequencing in the right way, it doesn't have to be an impersonal follow-up. You can have video of yourself introducing yourself, your process, their setting expectations and, and leading them down the right path. And a lot of the times, you know, I'd go in and same thing, you door knock on somebody's home and they're not ready to list, right? But I still have to say, hey, can I have your information, you know, can you figure out ways of, of acquiring that. Whereas again, with digital door knocking, 
we're finding the same people considerably easier and allowing them to put in their information, allowing them to dictate kind of the speed that, that this is going. We're no longer, you know, it's, it's not obtrusive in any way, shape or form. It just gives these people the opportunity to, to meet you, to understand what you're doing and then start asking you questions and position yourself as an expert. I think that's the key, man. That's the key. So let's talk about the specifics of digital door knocking. Either one of you can start as to how you, how you two are doing this for, for real estate agents. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I can share my screen and kind of give you an example because I think everybody wants to visually understand it. Um, you got to remember most of these homeowners on Facebook, they're just scrolling down the news you like to do every day, right? It's a passive style of marketing. They're not on marketplace searching for you. They're not on Google searching for their home to be sold. Um, so when we say digital door knocking, it is so random that they see this in their feed. Yet in that moment, they decide that they're interested. Um, and so it becomes this passive scroll that locks into a conscious decision to give their information. So it is an art in itself. And so what I'm gonna share with you is typically when you see an ad, it's gonna look something like this. It's gonna say, if someone were to buy your home, would you sell it? Okay. Find it its value in the current market. And we're actually going to just use a boring, boring generic old map. And there's actually a reason behind that because it's familiar. It's something we use every single day. It's not invasive. It's not feeling like a, a, a typical real estate marketing, you know, ad, right? You don't want, want to do that because they'll just pass that right up every time. If anything, they're, they're connecting. They're like, that's my area. That's where I live. You know, I'm drawn into the find the value of my home. Um, and there's actually, there's an art to it, especially considering that in the United States, everybody has to work within a 15 mile minimum radius. So you can't just put in any old area there, especially if you're like, well, I only work Paradise, for example, or Henderson. So we actually go in there and we've, we've considered that we kind of perfected this model because if you look at the way our funnels work, and our funnel is basically just where we capture information, we developed a model that produces um, just incredible click-through. So what that means is that this particular ad and template you just saw is producing yeah. at the moment more than 62% click to contact ratio. Can you zoom in on that one, dude? I want to um, see that one. I, I don't know if I can, but we'll, we'll get some screenshots your way. Okay. Um, what I, what I wanted just to highlight here is if you look at this ad as of last month, 14,217 people tested it. Out of the 14,217 people, 62% click to contact ratio. And that's given a lot of people doing it wrong. So it's still producing high results. So what that means ultimately is it's if you can find a low cost per click model on Facebook, you will get leads and you'll get leads, lots of them. So we actually break that down into what's the average cost per lead, what's the average cost per phone number, what's the average cost per email. Um, but I will tell you every market is unique. It doesn't matter where you are, whether you're in Fargo, North Dakota, or Vegas, like here, or San Diego, um, you're going to have to understand the marketplace of Facebook. You have to actually sometimes, I think, be more aggressive with your ad spend and budget to, to get into a market like that's a little higher end or more competitive. Yes. Yeah, so let's talk about the different markets because you guys have been doing this for a long time. Let's say, uh, I, I think there are there are probably more than, than three, but let's break it down into three, right? We're gonna talk about the entry level, and then let's talk about the mid-range, and then let's talk about the higher end, more towards, more towards luxury. Uh, what, what have you seen as the difference in approach when we're doing digital door knocking with entry level? Let's go entry level first. Every, everybody on entry level, I, I, we all, we've been doing this for five years now, and we've always used $9 a day as far as an ad spend. Okay. It just, it's the fastest way to get to a few hundred people. It's the few hundred people that ultimately where Facebook creates an algorithm or a relevancy score. Um, and really, if you can get a sample size of a couple hundred people, you're going to be revealed data that's either good, bad, or just not an, insufficient. Um, and usually for us, if we get clicks, we're getting leads. And so but it's not ultimately just you deciding, well, I got a, an ad that has lots of leads because ultimately what if those leads are outside of your area? What are those leads are incomplete and partial and so forth? So 
what we've created is um, a, 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 a kind of a foolproof way of testing the market by running something called the split test. Okay. And Logan does a really good of ex, uh, job of explaining this, so I'll actually pass the mic to Logan. But the, the split test itself is running three identical ads in a period of 24 hours. And because you're actually sampling three unique audiences, you're not crossing over. Can I, can I pause you for that? Because I think that's yeah. really important. And I'm going, to, I'm going to relate this back to actually door knocking. Yeah. And imagine for a second, if you were able to door knock the same, the same neighborhood, right, with a different message, but not being able to bother them. Because imagine me door knocking and then a minute later stopping by and saying, hey, I have something different to deliver. And then a minute later saying, hey, hold on, I have something completely different, right? And so the, the power of being able to digitally door knock and throw out three different messages and seeing which one sticks to the consumer, I think it's super powerful. And so I wanna transition into that, Logan, and have you explain so that people can really understand why it's even more important than, than I'm explaining. I think you're even confused right now, Tristan, because it's not three different messages, it's three identical messages. Do so, you, okay, so with the, with the three identical messages, is it, is it different areas then are we looking at? Or what? No, what's the, it's what? actually, I'll, I'll show you really quickly and then Logan can talk about this. So if you look at the, this test I just ran with this gal in Las Vegas, the actual ad imagery, the actual ad copy, the actual 50 mile radius targeting, it's all the same. There's nothing different about it. And this ad versus this ad versus this ad actually produced three very different results. Um, this ad right here had 33 clicks on it, a really good click, click, um, uh, you know, CPC, but at the end of the day, only 11 out of 33 gave you at least an address and actually only two provided email, which gave this person a $25 cost per email. But then if you actually look up the same identical ad produced a $5 email in this case, and the 34 clicks translated into a lot more leads, and only and out of these leads, half of those leads also provided an email. So there was nothing unique or different about any of these. We just sampled so, out the audiences. So different audiences or same audiences, guys? In this case, it's gonna be same audiences. And, and not to confuse anybody, um, Tristan, essentially what you're talking about is the more traditional and standard type of split testing. Um, something that we yeah. also do as well is, split testing your creative so that you can find it exactly you said, you know, you're, you're throwing spaghetti at a wall to see what sticks. So the way I speak to my high end clients and the way I speak to my entry level clients may be slightly different because you know, they're, they're they are, they're different people it, typically. And, and you do need to communicate things slightly different. However, our idea of split testing is more of a, general way of finding relevancy in any market. So regardless of whether you're targeting mid, um, low or high, what you do is figure out that the ad sequencing that you think is going to work. And again, come to street text, pick one of our, our templates, meet with yeah. your coach, allow us to kind of talk with you, figure out what's going on in your market and then match the right ad style essentially to that market. But then once you've figured that out, our idea of split testing really is, is simple. You take that same ad and triple it, do the exact same, same target, same imagery, same ad copy. If you could create the ad and, and make it, double or triple you know, you know create this ad this many times that's what we're looking for nothing different and the reason for that again is that facebook needs to decide and predict future relevancy so if you drop a, a 15 mile targeted pin around where you live let's say there's 500,000 people that live there facebook needs to decide right away whether or not this ad will stand the test of time so once this ad has reached all let's say 500,000 people in the area how good of an ad will it still be? That's what Facebook's trying to do. Now to reach 500,000 people, we're talking months, right? Typically. Yeah. So you don't want to run an ad for months to decide whether it was good or not. But in 24 hours, Facebook, what they'll do is they'll show the first 500 people within any area. Now you're talking 500,000 people potentially being targeted. So the 500 that happen to be targeted with each individual ad is essentially randomized. And Got it. Even if Facebook does their best job and says, okay, Tristan is a homeowner. He makes, you know, enough money. You know, I'm assuming you make pretty good money, Tristan, but you know what I'm saying? 
<laughs> but you know what I'm saying is they could have targeted you perfectly and found you an ideal homeowner using their algorithmic formula. But what if that person's having a bad day? That person says, you know, I'm not ready for this. They put an angry face on that. Facebook then assumes they targeted somebody improperly. That type of profile won't be targeted with your ad any longer. So we, and we don't like that. So you're, you're essentially playing a game here. So again, to make sure that you're finding the best first 500, build more than one ad. Guys. It's, it's beautiful. Right? Cause guess what? You can literally sit on the computer. If you were having a bunch of fun, I don't suggest people do this um, and set up 10 ads each at 10 bucks for example, not, not with the intention of spending a hundred bucks, but the 10 ads, 10 identical ads, 10 identical ad copy, 10 identical targeting. Um, and you just literally wait for the first submission with the, with the full complete information in the area that you want to be. Um, and then just turn all the other ones off. That's brilliant. Right? Because, guys. because here's the thing, whenever a contact comes in, at least in our system, what we're going to show you is that it reveals to you the ad ID. And so with Clara Spears here with a full phone number submission from this ad ID ending with eight, three, you know, mm -hmm. and this next one from eight, three, and she's seeing like a pattern of eight, three and five, three, those are the two ads that she'd probably want to let continue running and then ultimately decide based on the areas that she prefers most and the quality of information, which one she continues with. Mm -hmm. um, so we kind of have a rule of thumb when we're looking at ad data and that's why you have a coach is we basically say, in the first 24 hours, if you have not pulled in an, a, any sort of lead, you need to take that thing off or Facebook is going to continue messaging it or uh, spending your money at a bad cost per click and a bad cost per lead. Just like this one, if I would have gotten to her sooner, I would have never allowed her to continue running this ad at a $4.71 address and a $25 email. Um, we would have known in the first 24 hours, this is the ad that you want to turn off. Dude, I, I love this, man. I really do. Dude, this is so then let me redo my analogy. This is like picking up a, a big farming area, right? Dropping three Tristans in three different areas and saying, Oh, Tristan, you know what? Forget the other two. This is the area because you're finding a lot more people responsive right here. Doors are being open. If it's digital door knocking, compare it to the door being open. Because if the door is open, right, and, and you're getting a good cost per email ratio, then ultimately every single one of those could be getting to meet you face to face. And so you got to always imagine with the digital door knocking, it's only as effective as the first impression you provide. So I always say, as soon as you find the great performing ad, make sure that your brand you're there face to face with questions um, that will be asked. Because at the end of the day, the perfect opportunity, if you get a door opened, is obviously get that door open, number one, get them to, to meet you, number two, and get them to respond to you, number three. That right. right there is, is the holy grail of an autoresponder an open, a play, and a response. Well, that takes me into my next question, unless, Logan, you have anything to add there. Well, just one more thing, since we were, we were talking about, you know, the, um, the low end, the middle end and the high end of the market. And it, I don't care what your, you know, um, middle of your particular market is everywhere has that, you know, for where we are median price points around 800,000. We do have mark, we do have certain areas of homes where the, the median price point becomes 5 million. And it's actually, you know, 15 minutes away from where I live, but I also 15 minutes the other way, there's $600,000 homes, right? So we, we have a, you know, low, mid, and upper end of our market as well. Um, so regardless, again, whatever price point you're talking is, is less important other than understanding that there are these three different kind of subsections of market. And when it comes time to targeting, the 15 mile um, radius that's been imposed in the States, I think has been, you know, it's, it's a blessing in disguise. A lot of people struggled with it at first because you got so used to farming neighborhoods, not cities, not counties right? Not these huge jurisdictions. And now that's changed. And it's taken some time for people to get used to that. But again, in my opinion, it's been a blessing disguise because I used to have people come in and say, you know what, I only do Beverly Hills. That's it. That's all I do. And, and that's fine. I get that. I understand that. But to acquire those leads does take an enormous amount of money. So using myself as an example, again, where I live, the median price point here is about 800,000. 15 minutes to the north, it's, it's 3 million. 15 minutes to the south, it's about 600,000. If I was to focus on that $3 million area alone, I would expect one viable lead every maybe two to four months, you know, but I'm still paying $9 a day on those ads. How, how inefficient is that? The, the effectiveness is so low that I will probably turn off my ads before I ever got to that viable lead.
Makes Whereas, sense. If, you know, in the $600,000 area, I'm getting leads every single day. In the $800,000 area, I'm getting leads fairly regularly. So if I can combine all three areas under one good ad, I'm getting consistent leads from two areas. And when I get that, you know, $3 million lead once every three or four months, whatever it is, you know, it's been cost effective for me to get there. So understand what you're truly looking for, but then also understand what's going to work best in your market. That's super important. And again, being able to combine multiple price points will in a sense allow you to be more effective with what you're doing and, and not spend too much money on these high price leads, allow them to come in when they're ready. Here's, here's another example, Tristan, because when we were talking about $9 a day, that's just a generic number, right? When you're like David Stites, I got going in here and he's, he's in the SoCal market and he's a guy that, you know, has, he's a, he's a, a massive player. He's got lots of success. And what we knew right off the get go, if we're running in San Diego or LA or Southern California, that's a higher price market. It's also, it's also a marketplace on Facebook that a lot of people are advertising on. It doesn't matter what professionalism you're, you're, you know, real estate or not, everybody's on Facebook in Southern California trying to do some sort of advertising. So naturally, when I look at a place like that, I would I almost recommend start by doubling your, your budget, right? Like David did. Because I, when we're kind of comparing the average $6 email in North America, you can't say that for Orange County in that area. Like you're going to mm. spend a little bit more for it. So why not double your, um, your ad spend just to get into the market, just like David did. And you can clearly see like in at least in this market, it's bearing pretty similar. He's still getting a pretty good cost per click, but his, his emails are up at 12 bucks. But you know what? I mean, if I'm looking at the average price point in that, so that SoCal market, it's all good. Right. Cause I'm going to be six, seven times more of, of a commission than the next guy. Oh yeah. It makes total sense guys. All right. So then let's get into the actual ads. I want to see some of the ads for digital door knocking just to give people some ideas and then once people click on the ad, what happens? What's the process after? Uh, but Marcus, I got a comment from, you know, Barry Jenkins or no? I know. I, of course I know Barry. Yeah. Barry says he wants, he wants to know how long your hair has, has gotten since COVID-19 because he loves the spikes. <laughs> oh, thanks man. I, yeah. Well, Lisa cut it once and now I need her to cut it again. My, my son just shaved his head. I'm like, we're in a new island. I'm, I'm ready for new beginnings. Let me just go for it. Let me do the whole Britney Spears, just shave it all. Yeah. <laughs> Can you record that, please? We'll put it up on Lab Kid Agents. <laughs> you got to record uh, your meltdown, Marcus. I'm, I'm at an Airbnb right now, so this is not my, like, typical. I'm just adapting right now, right? Because we take possession at our home tomorrow, um, and we just sold. So it was kind of fun. A big epic moment last night was seeing the money transferred from my home into the bank account. I'm like, it's sold, <laughs> you know, because you can't. Yeah. It's, you see the for sale sign, you, it's sold, but it's not real until it's actually sold. Yeah, anyways, um, it's exciting on my end. Okay, so looking at these ads, I think it's important to, to, to know this is just one of many templates, okay? We have lots of different ways to do this, but the reason why I love this one, and, and Logan, you can take them through this, is that when someone's on Facebook and they're randomly scrolling down their feed and you know, this is your, you guys, everybody here is seeing this as a desktop presentation. No one on their smartphones when they're pulling that out would see um, Aisa on the left or the stuff on the right. They would just be basically seeing the feed on their mobile phones. And so it's going to look no different than any other placement in your feed as far as a homeowner is concerned. And then I think the, the clear, I think the clear congruency between the ad itself into the landing page is what makes it so unique. Because unlike Facebook lead ads, which we're trying to capture all their information at one time, the reason why this ad and this formula is so successful is that we're not trying to capture all your information at one point. Like it's, it's almost like we're trying to earn your trust first and foremost. So we're weeding out people. Um, and it starts with the address submission because that's ultimately what they want, right? Is their home value. They want to know what their home could sell for. So why wouldn't you start with an address? And that's a big thing. So when I go in to put my address, it's going to be captured no matter what happens. As long as I start inputting my address in here, as soon as I click analyze my property, it's submitted into the dashboard. Yeah, the, the biggest mistake I find that um, other you know, funnels uh, similar like this uh, seem to make would be first and foremost, 
uh, exactly like Marcus said, uh, the congruency between the ad imagery and the landing page is so significant. That's what leads to that 62% uh, percent plus click to contact ratio. Because somebody clicks on an ad, they get to a landing page that's taken them off Facebook. If they get there and have any worries or any concerns or any guesses as to what is this? Why did I get here? This doesn't look like what I clicked on. We have, we have a split second in our brains to make a decision if you're happy with something or not. And if you get there and it doesn't look familiar, what's going to happen? Oh, okay. Well, boom. You don't trust it. You, 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 you click off of it. So as the agent, you would have paid for a click. You got somebody to your landing page. You paid for that opportunity. Why not increase the likelihood of getting that information? Right? So again, having imagery that's consistent and congruent is absolutely key then the next side of the equation again is how you ask for that first piece of information again these people are understanding hey i'm looking for evaluation of course i need to put in my address that's a given that's easy not everybody understands i'm going to need to put in my phone number and my email to get that information maybe they're just going to mail it maybe there's there's a bunch of a bunch of other thought processes there now yeah. if you ask for everything up front which is also fairly typical in this realm People get there and they say, well, I'm not going to leave you my phone number. Well, I guess this isn't going to work. So you don't get anything. You pay for a click that goes nowhere. But if you start with that address, you at least ensure you're getting that address. Now, if they bail out, it's essentially like somebody's raised a flag. We're talking digital door knocking. Imagine if you were walking down a neighborhood and every fourth home has a flag saying, hey, realtors, welcome. Come talk to me about my house. <laughs> How, how amazing would that be? You know, being a door knocker yourself, would that not have made your life a little bit easier? Dude, I wouldn't have to feel that, that, that little anxiety I feel every time I'm at a door knock. Right? <laughs> and that's, that's the, the idea is you're, you're, you're allowing these people to come in and essentially fly, fly their flag. And then you're just responding. Now you're being helpful. You're not, you're not interrupting their day. In a sense, they're interrupting yours and you're facilitating with, with solid information. And I'm here to help you is the idea. Right. So yeah. we should all have good mailers. If you don't, you, you, you need, you need a good mailer this day and age, especially not being able to door knock for a while. You're going to need to have good mailers. So consider having something prepared and ready to go for something as little as an address only. And again, consider not only just disseminating information through the mail, consider ways of obtaining further information, offer things that you need email and phone number, in order to continue the process, right? So for one, um, I really like a, uh, a good market update mailer. And we should all have a good one by now, but have stats, you know, neighborhood stats, either 30, 60 or 90 day stats on it. Um, have a little bit about the community and a little bit about you, right? And if you're sending this to an address only, let's say, what I really like to do is essentially sit, have something on there that says, um, in order to continue receiving this, I will need your email as I'm going to only send it digitally. What we're trying to accomplish here is keeping our neighborhood green kind of idea, right? So you're, you're establishing a green initiative. Now your mailer needs to be a wow factor though, right? So it's on thick point paper, it's color, it's two sided. It's more expensive than you'd ever, you know, consider sending multiple times. You only ever send it to an address only one time. Again, with the thought being, if you'd like to continue receiving this information, I'd love to send it to you digitally on an ongoing basis. Please text me your email address. I'll add you into this right away, right? Another option would be to allow people to understand one of the key factors in, um, in home values would be homes similar to yours selling for a lower price or higher price. Right? So for instance, again, my home's worth 800,000. If my neighbor sells for 725 and his home is very similar, now all of a sudden a neighbor down the road sells at 750, right? My home may not be worth 800,000 anymore, unfortunately. That's, it's right. just gonna set the market, right? So if I can identify that an easy mailer to somebody, look, you were looking for your home value. I'd love to you know, come to your home and have a good look and give you a good idea as to how it sits on the market now. However, one thing that can and will affect your home's value is other homes like yours hitting the market. If you'd like me to set you up on an instant notification list so I'd be able to send you properties just like yours as soon as they hit the market in your area, text me your email address. Things like that. Don't use these mailers. Don't waste the opportunity. Right? Don't, you have be, a don't be recycled. Right? Don't be that guy that goes straight to the recycling bin. You need to make sure it's personalized enough that they're going to open it and read it. And I think that's ultimately... The example we just shared with you even there is 
it's it's number one it's brand it's it's bold colors purple um it's got facebook home value submission so that's you know when they go to open that they're going to be triggered and reminded from that facebook request right you always want to bold the facebook um and then he's just taken a simple template that he found from donna swansea from back in the day put in his picture you don't have to reinvent the wheel and just had a nice little um little little description there. I've researched the properties that are active or sold in your neighborhood over the last 90 days. Depending on the condition of your home, would likely sell between A and B or higher depending on upgrades and updates. You have a property in a hot market with nothing for sale like yours right now. Since prices in that area are so diverse, I would love to come take a look so I can give you a more accurate value of what I could sell your home for. That's it. Marcus, can you, can you send me the verbiage for the post you did and the picture? I'm going to post it up on LabCodes. 100%, 100%. And he found this and he actually in the mastermind today before we got that crazy <laughs> um, hacker come in, he was telling us about how this particular um, letter got him a listing appointment. Um, he also sent a mug and he did some cool things with it. And he actually personally delivered it and dropped it off to these people. So not everybody will do that. But this is simple. And we're talking about the most basic of information because remember, we haven't even talked about the email yet. That was just the address. That's yeah. where well, that stop at that point. This is where it gets really fun because as soon as you get the email, they have to click on a box that says email permission mm -hmm. to move forward. That activates the email. That activates the autoresponder. That activates you face to face, right? And so don't don't neglect that. That's the end game. That's the the address only is great, and we have lots of different strategies for them. But the end game is getting the autoresponder to fire, and at the very minimum, email to fire. And then obviously more than that, we want phone numbers. We want the AI to shoot out for the text message component. So we're just walking you through every steps. And what makes street text unique is that this digital door knocking tool pulls out all type of leads, starting with the very most partial moving into email. And then we're kind of actually getting deeper based on the, the process itself. And this is where they can tell you information about their home, time frame for selling. There's a drop down menu and so forth. They can tell you things like, you know, kitchen, updated, et cetera, et cetera. And then the brand, right? And we also find this is a, an excellent place. If you're getting phone number submissions, pull in a Facebook review. Now, Aisa doesn't have it, so she can pull hers in, but if she had a Facebook review, we can pull that right in to this part of the funnel. And that's where your brand is. That's where they finally probably at some point feel that there's actually a real person connecting with them. But really when it comes down to it, your autoresponder should be the main focus because no matter what happens, even your AI can point back to that face-to-face -face email. Um, and that right there, they can even schedule an exact market um, or an exact value or set an appointment. But um, in three minutes, I'll be getting a text message from Julie, her autoresponder. Um, and they don't, they don't know it's anybody but an assistant working on their behalf to start the conversation. Makes sense. There's a quick question. Hi there. Uh, may not be the right form for this, but I'm just uh, in my account trying to embed a bomb bomb video and can't get it to work. What's the quickest way to get support response? It, it's <laughs> my first auto response. You know, my, it's called the Street Text Academy. Go to the course. It's already built in as a module. So there's, we just, just made that free. Just get that, give that to everybody because this is all, I'll, I'll put that in the link right now. Cool. And I can, and, and Josie, I'll, I'll reach out to you as well afterwards. If you have any issues with that, that's a, that's a five, five minute chat. I can help you. We'll screen share. It'll take literally five minutes or less to help you get those embedded. That's an easy one. Okay. All right. And guys, I'm wearing a bomb bomb t-shirt because I still don't have a street text t-shirt. I'm just saying we, we got, we just got swag. It's, it's, it'll be coming. You're, you're one of the first to get it. So <laughs> don't worry. We're going to get the hats. We're going to get the shirts. I've been, I've been asked for some tank tops. Oh, you know, whoa, 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 damn. <laughs> sun's out, guns Tank out. Tops. <laughs> sun's out, guns out, bro. Sun's Dude, out, guns out. I'm not there yet, okay? I'm not there yet. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> there's something that came to mind. So I'm, I'm in the middle of reading this book. It's called uh, The Magic of Thinking Big. It's an older book by David Schwartz. And uh, Tim Ferriss recommended it to me. And he said that this is one of his books that, that really changed his life. But it's something along the lines that what you guys are talking about, and I wanted to read just a quick sentence here. It says, in building anything, and this is in digital door knocking, right? Yep. In building anything, automobiles, bridges, missiles, we need tools. 
Many people in their attempt to build a successful life or business forget there are tools to help them. And I think, I thought that was so key. It just reminded me of that book. It's like, there are tools out there to make our life easier, right? So much easier. I mean, the, the Facebook lead generation solution is not just generation. That's one component. And we're focusing on that today in digital door knocking. But it, equally important is thinking about the tools that make that solution work smarter. You don't want to be working harder. You don't want to be spending more time um, giving CMAs and home values to people over and over, not getting any response back. So you'll, you know, we'll, we'll talk about those key integrations in future webinars. Um, but what we found on the other side of the autoresponder, on the other side of the personal follow-up, um, some of the key integrations that we've been discussing that work really well in the U.S. is going to be BombBomb and something like HomeBot. So just to kind of give someone a solution, because if you – if you have a boring generic autoresponder, both SMS and email, your brand is not there. You have no way to tell that person. You always got to think of it from the perspective of that homeowner. If they clicked on an ad randomly, just like this, right? Let's go back to that ad level for a second and let's all take off our real estate hats for a second and be the, be the homeowner and just think, oh, we're randomly scrolling. We find an ad, someone clicks on it. You know, we click on it. We want to know what our home could sell for. That mm -hmm. moment we decide to put in our email, we're probably assuming that we're going to get some sort of automated CMA in that moment. So if you allowed, if I had something in here that just said, Hey, Marcus, I want to let you know, I've received your Facebook request for the property valuation of 133 Glenridge and I'm on it. Um, and then I had something like, are there any updates or renovations that I should be aware of? Nothing in there with video, no brand, no email signature. Um, I, I guarantee you as a homeowner, I'd probably mm -hmm. just be like, forget it. You know, I'm done. I, you know, I thought this was an automated value. I don't want it anymore. Got right? it. Makes sense. So it, from their perspective, they probably going there thinking it was an automated CMA. So if there's nothing yeah. in there that connects to them on the human side, you probably lost your chance because your first impression could be your last. And yeah, so I, I, just, I just encourage people, like if you, if you were knocking on someone's door, you would never just drop a letter off and run as fast as you can and, and uh, doorbell ditch that person. Just be like, forget it. You know, right? I, you know, I thought this that's very true, dude. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think that'd be wise. So you got to be there face to face. And that's the best thing you do is just be authentic and genuine. And a part, part of what we want to talk about is just everyone's got their own voice. There's no one script. Um, you know what, what Logan's going to say, what I'm going to say, and what you're going to say, it could be completely different, but you got to find your voice and you got to be genuine because that's what people are craving is authenticity. So on the other side of that, it's all about your ability to connect with people and create a discovery moment. And most of these leads you got to imagine are just curious or just assume they're just curious. Even if they said, I'm ready to sell immediately and here's all this information about my home. The best thing you could do to get them from being like, you're just trying to solicit me to talk to you is just be giving value and asking questions so you can best show them that the internet's best guess is absolutely not what they need. And to talk with you, they'll be able to get a clear, you know, alignment of what the true market value is. Well, and, and something I really wanted to add that's, I, I feel incredibly important. We just got off a, a, our, our own company's um, webinar recently here. And one of the comments from one of our clients was um, drip campaigns suck, not that ours, but just drip campaigns in general suck. They don't work. They push people further away. And I could do nothing other than partially agree with her in that if they aren't done right, absolutely they can. If, if you're just doing the standard, the normal, just the, the, the missing personality, what you're going to find is your open rates just absolutely drop off, off the, the, the cliff. And you do find these people are starting to disconnect from you and your follow-up. And imagine that, you know, or at least at least consider the fact that a lot of social media leads are going to be ready in three to six months, some longer. So put the finish line at the six month window. It's not the finish line. Isn't your first conversation or your first interaction with these people, but you have to get them to the finish line. So if we can understand or assume that the finish line six months, there's going to be an opportunity that they're not going to respond to my emails, my texts, my calls, whatever, my mailers, I, they may go completely dormant for six months. How do I keep them engaged though? Because I do have an automatic mechanism delivering messaging to them. Make sure there's value in there. Make sure there's personality. Make sure it's you. This isn't a computer system. This isn't a bot. I'm a real person trying to help you. And as soon as you can convey that, people feel the need to reciprocate on the other end. 
if, if it's, if I can tell it's a drip sequence, if I can tell it's just some automation, eh, right. You haven't done any work for me. I don't owe you anything, but right. if I feel as if you're speaking to me more personally and you're putting your time and your energy into these videos, even if it is an automation, it doesn't scream automation. It looks like a personal follow-up. And now I feel the need to reciprocate. Hey, sorry, Tristan, I'm actually not ready to sell my home. I shouldn't have clicked on that. Okay, fine. I understand. Not a problem. I'm, you know, maybe now we remove them from, from that automation, set something slightly different up. That's a, a, a longer term in between check-ins, or I just schedule something that says check in with them manually in three months, six months, 12 months. But you, you want to get that response. So we understand exactly where they are, right? We don't know that. And I can't tell you how many times we hear it. Hey, I started this program, you know, 12 months ago, or, or, you know, um, somebody's clicked on that ad and they've been 12 months in the nurture field. Now, all of a sudden, hey, I've been receiving your emails and now I'm ready to go. Great. You need to keep them there. You have yeah. to keep them engaged. These individuals can unsubscribe at any time they wish. Give them a reason to stay. So here's a cool number. We had a, a gal, Nicole uh, Schmalt, that came back in after leaving Street Text for about a year. And then she just was interested in auditing those leads. And she went and audited every single address that she received in the time with Street Text. She said something like 60% of those homes went on the market and sold. Man, that's a really high number. Right? And so, so ultimately, it's those, like, a lot of people are like, oh, it's just an address. I'm not going to do anything with it. Right? And then similarly with an email, oh, they didn't respond to me. But why, why we talk about this is like, okay, you're humanizing the process as you're wearing that bomb bomb shirt by dropping in a bomb bomb video, right? But what about you needing to humanize the process for yourself? Why do we always talk to everybody like, you should scrub that lead. You should pull up tax records. You should find them on Facebook. Uh, oftentimes, I find the first search, if you have mutual friends, rises to the top. And then you can use the advanced search and search by location. But most people don't try to humanize it. Mm -hmm. uh, they're just looking at it as a lead as some disconnect. Um, and if they, you know, if they, they're supposed, it's almost like they're, we all come from this mentality that they're supposed to just magically reach out to me, but where's the intention of creating a relationship? You know? I think that's, a, that's the biggest misconception, but um, either of you, Marcus or Logan, there was a question on the Facebook side, quite a few questions, but one that I think people want to know is, can you show me maybe the, the ad that's working best? <laughs> For, for you guys for digital door knocking? Yeah, I'll let Marcus bring that up and I'll quickly talk about it here. I don't know if you're able to share your screen again, Marcus, but the best ad to use is one that doesn't look like an ad. <laughs> yeah. Right, it's, it's instant recognizability. And again, uh, you know, to keep reiterating a, a point that's incredibly important, um, people don't log on to Facebook in order to find an agent to sell their home. That's not the purpose that they were there at all. So if that were the case, it would be as easy as to put an ad with a for sale sign and say, hey, I'm here to sell your home. Because that's if that's what they're looking for, that's what's going to, you know, they're going to pick up on. But that's not what they're there for. So they may be trying to do that. And of course, that's what we're trying to find is people who are looking to sell their home, of course. But you have to stop their scroll. You have to do something that doesn't scream, Hi, hey, I'm an ad. So the reason why we use that map image the way that we do is, again, we're, we're in a sense playing on the, the psychology aspect of this where people see a map image that's instantly recognizable. It's something that everybody in any area knows what their area looks like. So as I'm going through, I'm immediately, without me even thinking about it, I look at that map, I'm like, oh, I recognize that. I better at least stop and investigate because sure. it could mean so many things. Right. I mean, it, it could be newsworthy. There could be a sinkhole in my neighbor's backyard for all I know. There could be, you know, I always say this one, there's an, a new aquatic center coming in. It could be something positive. It could be something negative. We don't know, but it's happening around me. I better check this out. Right. And then what we like to do is remove, and, and this is going to be based on where you are and what you're looking for specifically, of course, but for the example of somebody who's looking for Beverly Hills specifically, you know, if someone wanted to buy your Beverly Hills home, great you're now more likely to get more Beverly Hills leads, but you're not going to get anybody else, right? And if you're targeting 15 miles, you're just spinning your wheels now. You're, you're targeting an area that's so much broader than the area that you're relevant to, if that makes any sense. So what we try to do is, again, expand on that. Make sure that the verbiage you're using is relevant to the entirety of your targeted area. It's so incredibly important. And more important than that, I don't know if we want to show building an ad here real quick. Yeah, we do. Please. Uh, 
go into that for me, Marcus, and I want to show you a couple um, things that I think is, is incredibly important. So if we go into the funnels here, um, since we're talking Beverly Hills, let's just do it. Go uh, select there and type in Beverly Hills, but do it with a uh, lowercase and put in um, California at the end too. Or else you get somewhere else. So this is, this is incredibly important. I'll, I'll show you. Um, we see this all the time. People put in their state abbreviations or here in Canada, their province abbreviations all the time. And if I were getting on an airplane and I was heading to Vancouver, I would certainly want to know if I was heading to Vancouver, Washington or British Columbia. That's important to me. But when you're looking at an ad, you know where you live. So if somebody who specifies Beverly Hills CA or Beverly Hills, California, they're not in Beverly Hills. Right? This is some outside entity trying to advertise in my area. It's an outsider. And especially right now, we don't like outsiders. We're, we're all shop local. You know, be, you know, we got, we're coming out of this together and, and, and supporting our local community. So I don't want an outsider advertising in my area. That's kind of the, the, the feeling here. So you definitely don't want the verbiage of California. You know, I think that's important. But again, consider the fact you're dropping a pin in the middle of Beverly Hills and you're doing 15 miles. So what you want to do is use verbiage now that's relevant to the entirety of your area. So what we like to do is use Emojipedia and simply come here and you get a, an emoji of a home. Now, before you put that in, actually, Marcus, go back and just leave uh, Beverly Hills just for one quick sec. I just want to show something really interesting here. Now, what we've done is we've got you to stop your scroll. And, and forgive us, the image is a little bit small here, so you have to squint a little bit. But imagine now you're scrolling through Facebook, you see a map. The first thing that we all tend to do is try to find where we are in, in relation to that map. So I'm looking here, okay, boom, Beverly Hills, that's where I am, great. Now, not only do I wanna be relevant, I need to get your eyes up into my ad copy, right? And if you're looking at Beverly Hills here, as you can see, there's nothing that draws your eyes upward. But now, Marcus, go ahead and throw in those emojis for me. Without changing anything else, you'll notice, look at Beverly Hills again on the map here. There's something, and it's less impactful again because it's so small, but when it's bigger, it's, it's considerably more impactful. But you'll notice there's something in your upper peripheral that's making you say, hey, look up. So, and that's the power of emojis. And you can certainly over emoji. So this looks like a kindergartner did this. We don't want that. But this, I think, is that, that professional line where it does work to get their eyes up. And again, now you're rem uh, um, relevant to the entirety of your area. If someone wanted to buy your home, would you sell it? If you're in Malibu, if you're in downtown LA, if you are in Beverly Hills, you're now more relevant to the entirety of your area, meaning that you will have much better cost per click on average. You'll find better clients. You'll have more consistent leads. Everything works um, so long as you follow the formula. Yeah. And I'll, and I'll add on when I always like to take people right into the step of dropping the pin, because if, if you know you have to work within 15 miles, and let's just say you're dropping your pin in Beverly Hills, because we're using Beverly Hills as this example. Well, the first thing I do is I go, okay, what's 15 miles around Beverly Hills? So we open that imagery to show you, that means you're targeting all the way up to San Fernando, down to Redondo Beach, to you know, Northeast Los Angeles and Glendale and downtown LA, all the way into the water. So if you know that, until Facebook changes that, you gotta quickly start recognizing what you can do. Now, for anybody that lives on the coast, one of the hacks is literally dropping your pin out in the water, right? Or if you're in, around the mountains, you can drop it towards the mountains because really you're, it's allowing you to hack the algorithm and just put that circle on the outskirts of the areas that you wanna focus in on. So it doesn't always mean you have to work within that 15 miles, there are hacks around it, but ultimately you need to start with your dropping the pin so you can frame in the imagery you're gonna use in front of that homeowner. So if I was using Beverly Hills, I need to make sure that San Fernando and Redondo Beach and these areas like Commerce and Huntington Park and Glendale and Burbank are all on that image. Because now here's my 15 miles, I'm gonna actually create a drop the pin circumstance where I have a longitude latitude and then I'm gonna go back and just like I did here, I'm gonna zoom out on that image so that 15 miles is represented. And instead of saying Beverly Hills here on the city and our neighborhood, we replace that with emojis that speaks to everybody. And, you know, like we mentioned before, you don't just run that one ad, you run it three identical times because they're going to be going into three contrasting audiences. And for some reason, you know, I'm doing three conservatively. 
five, 10, whatever we want to do, one of those ads will always, always take off. And once you find the ad that takes off, then it becomes fun because now everything shifts into conversion um, and getting your automations lined up with your brand and, you know, everything like that. Um, ad performance is always step number one. So that's where we say, you know, come take Street Text for a trial to see how strong we can get you in terms of an ad performing and then actually join Street Text to learn how to create the entire solution, which is from top to bottom, not just generation. What you often see is that we do everything in workshops as well from Facebook lead generation to Facebook lead conversion to the mastermind that we had today to integrations like HomeBot and BombBomb and follow-up boss and line desk and you name it. There's so many ways to connect um, to add tweets classes where we actually review your ads and we give you better results. And even Logan has just started a class called the custom ad class um, where we actually build ads with you that you want to actually, you know, try that you can't find in our template so let's go build a new ad and see what we can do and again um we kind of you know r d is is really important in, in any industry rip off and duplicate right and we kind of <laughs> stole a page right out of the lca handbook and um what, what we're trying to do is again always increase collaboration that's that i mean the only way for ideas to grow is to get other people's opinions on them. So what I like to do is I do a custom ad class now where every Tuesday at one o'clock, we get a bunch of people show up and they say, okay, well, here are my ideas. This is what I'd like to do. And we kind of figure out which one is the best for that day. I show everybody how to build it. We all build it together. We get as many people trying to do that same ad at the same time. So we're not doing you know, one custom ad at a time. Hopefully we're doing five, 10, 15, 20. And then I can look at the results and say, okay, this one is heading down the right path. It's worth templating. So then we can take the best of the custom ad ideas and all these people have, and some of them have just crazy, crazy ideas, which is so fun for me. It's, 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 it's such a beautiful thing. Some of those ideas aren't going to work. It's fine. But that's, that's the idea of the collaboration is people can throw their crazy ideas out and somebody else might pick up on them and say, you know what, that's a bit crazy. But if you do it this way, it's like, oh, okay. And then we all just figure this out together. A bunch of collaboration from creative individuals you know, we, we reshape verbiage, we set up um, automations behind it. Anytime you create a custom ad, you're, go you're not going to have, again, standardized drip sequences. So then again, we'll start figuring out what's your first communication? What's the call to action? What do we want to say? Better yet, how can you say it? Putting, putting it in video format, right? But then we, we build these drip sequences out so that everybody who's part of Street Text will get the opportunity to you know, utilize some of this new information that's, that's always coming out. So that's a big part of what we're doing. We welcome everybody. Like the, it doesn't like start the trial, but feel free to come to any one of our workshops, right? There's no, you don't have to have anything, just come and observe and learn. Um, and that's the key. And even, you know, um, as I share my screen, just like you guys do with your lab code agent group, Tristan, like we do the same thing with our street text group. Um, we want, so much value in there. So we're always going to post examples of what people are doing um, that are winning, whether it's on the lead gen side or it's the, the conversion side and just examples of what people have done to create connections with their leads. Um, Cause there's no one way to do this. The important piece is we have to figure out how to get your strength across. Um, some people are going to be more bubbly and, and genuine and really good with video. Some people are going to have a harder time. So what is it that we do to bring out what that strength is in you? Um, and that's, that's the key. Everybody is an individual. I agree, man. I agree. I love this guys. All right. So next time, I think it's like in about two weeks. I think that's when our next time, right? July something. Let's, let's go into the tools that, that we're using specifically to be able to process digital door knocking. Uh, and obviously we'll bring in street text as the main one, but then show what do we do after, how is this tool work? And then it, it really brings it together for me at least. Uh, and guys, for those of you listening in, we put the link in on Facebook and here so that if you guys want to test it out, you can. For those of you who are wondering if this is recorded, it is. We're going to be sending out to everyone who registered. And Marcus or Logan, send me a picture of that envelope thing with the verbiage and I'll post it to the top of lab coats and I'll pin it to the top because that was, that was super sexy. It was. I mean, I recommend everybody, um, you're gonna, if you're going to be wanting to try Facebook out anyways, might as well try out Street Text. 
Because there's no sense in trying to figure it out and putting on marketing hats and trying to figure out ad creation and landing pages and automations and all that stuff, unless that's like a passion of yours. You guys are all made to get in a relationship with new people. So what we're doing is we're just giving you the best formula to get in front of somebody. And then we're going to find out how to pull that personality that you have that connects with people and create a relationship as fast as possible. Um, given SMS, given autoresponders, given Facebook Messenger, given mailers, there's so many different ways, obviously picking up the phone, <laughs> you know, um, we forget about that. It's like, we got a phone number. We're going to wait till our AI takes over. No, pick up the phone and just have a conversation, right? So it's, it's all about testing out the street text trial. Let us set up a three ad split test. Um, let's, let's take it for a ride and see what we can do for, in your marketplace. And then let's set you up for some awesome training. I love it, guys. And Richard Arlen Cure said, really glad I stumbled into this on the Facebook side of it. <laughs> uh, that was good. Sophia Bacall Kagan, so thank you. She joined us and said, thank you, guys. It was really good. So anyways, guys, thanks again. And for those of you who did register for this and are watching, you'll get a copy of this. We'll send it over to you by tomorrow. Marcus, Captain America, Logan, I changed your name to Hulk. I just didn't remember. So this, this, this is Hulk. Logan right here. All right, I knew I got it right. There it is. <laughs> oh, I love it, guys. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. And remember, go to www.streettext.com. Thanks, guys. Thank you.